Hi, I'm Summit Agarwal, Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Social Media and Community Outreach. Thank you for these questions. Walk in My Shoes says, what is your view about the WikiLeaks issue and what role will sites like these play in the future of higher echelon decision making? I think it was illegal for WikiLeaks to release the classified information that it did. I don't agree with that, certainly don't advocate it. It creates a tension between our making the raw information that our service members need on the front lines and our need to secure that information and ensure that inappropriate information isn't being shared. Uh, there's a balance that has to be struck between availability on the front lines and security uh, on the back lines. Vert Blue asks, do you think your job of representing a government entity on the internet will become harder or easier if net neutrality fails, and why? I'm not sure that there will be any clear or negative impact uh, on our ability to communicate within the United States, regardless of what happens with net neutrality. I think outside the United States, whatever precedents are set by the actions that we take with regard to net neutrality may have a positive impact or a negative impact in certain countries that have a strong or not so strong tradition of freedom of speech uh, and censorship with regard to their communication. So if certain countries take cues from us which result in them constraining information flow or communication, that will make it harder for us to communicate with them. With the increasing prevalence of the internet in providing communication, news medium, and organizational tools, why is net neutrality not being championed by this administration as a First Amendment right? I'm not deeply familiar with the White House's position on this issue. I think we all agree that we want two fundamental things with regard to the internet. One, we want free, unfettered innovation. We want companies that didn't exist yesterday to provide amazing new services tomorrow. On the other hand, we also want there to be speed, quality of service, robustness, and investment in the internet. I think those are the things that we're struggling to balance uh, with regard to the net neutrality debates. One of the President's bullet points on the campaign trail was a more open and transparent government. Do you feel that WikiLeaks is holding the administration to that promise? I don't believe that sites like WikiLeaks or others that are engaged in that activity have any impact on the administration's already strong commitment to openness and transparency. There are lots of examples of the administration making strong strides in that direction. I'll give you one. The, government is, the White House is leading an open government initiative across all the federal agencies. DOD is one agency participating in that. And we've taken a number of steps, including creating an open government plan, creating a venue where we solicit uh, input from citizens, uh, responding to that feedback, and so on. Uh, and so I think that they are taking these actions on their own because it was their own original commitment to openness and transparency. What is your current take on the Anti-Counterfeiting anti Trade Agreement, or ACTA? I don't follow that issue closely, and I don't have a strong position on that issue. How would you rate the technical competence of the people running our country? The technical competence is on par with any large organization. I think what's more important is that our senior most leaders have a very strong appreciation for the importance of technology, information technology, of the internet, and they've started to bring in lots and lots of people from the outside who have experience in those areas. Within DOD, we are lucky to have a very young workforce in many ways that are already quite technologically savvy, and they're creating a drive, a demand, um, and also providing us the expertise to rapidly uh, move up the curve with regard to information technology. How is DOD working to reach out to the under-18 crowd to ensure the long-term ability of the United States to operate without being seen as a bully or threat to others? We don't have specific programs that target any one demographic group versus another in any of the outreach programs that I'm familiar with. The State Department does. They've done a lot of good work here. I think the area in which DOD has the greatest impact on young people, old people, people of all ages all over the world is in its humanitarian efforts. From Haiti to Pakistan, other places, the aid that we provide when people have been struck by natural disasters or other issues like that, I think send um, a very strong signal about how we are prepared to help when other people have a time of need. Emmerich asks, is it possible for the US Department of Defense to use blogs, social networking, and similar tools to convince a jaded public that what the US military is doing is honorable, effective, and necessary? It's not our goal, certainly not my goal, to convince the US uh, to the American public of any one thing versus another. Our stated goal, and something that I have observed happening every day uh, inside DOD, the Department of Defense, is providing timely and accurate information so that people can make their own conclusions and exert governance through their elected representatives however they see fit. Part and parcel of that is that we've given a tremendous amount of access to our service members that has created a very strong, robust channel of communication directly between service members on the front lines and all over the world and the American people. 
there's a huge amount of latitude, which I think is a very good thing, in what those service members say. And so I think they're providing their perspective and their stories directly to the American people. Alex Hancock asks, what lasting impact, if any, do you feel the culture of posting personal information online on sites such as Facebook and Twitter will have on the future security of America and that of its citizens? That's a hard question. I don't know for sure if there will be any lasting impact. I'm hopeful, though, that there will be a long-term positive impact. The more we can get to know people within our country, but more importantly, across cultural lines in other countries, the better. If I'm able to use free, cheap, uh, free, uh, freely available uh, universal translation tools, for example, to follow people who are writing or sharing information uh, in China or in other countries, that makes it easier for me to understand those people and find mutual ground. Uh, obviously, there's a common sense element to this. Sharing too much information, sharing inappropriate information, crossing lines of operational security aren't good things. To the extent that those things happen, that's obviously bad. But I view that as very, very transitional, something that is a function of the newness of these technologies and not a long-term trend. 7R007H asks, how does the Department of Defense's massive amounts of secretive spending detailed in the Washington Post top secret America actually protect Americans better? I haven't been able to spend a huge amount of time reading the top secret America post, although I think it was a very good piece of work, and I certainly don't have deep insight across all intel agencies. But I have had a little bit of experience inside, uh, inside some of the intelligence functions of our government as a network warfare officer, uh, primarily with regard to online security information issues. And I can tell you that what I saw there absolutely does keep our country safe. The people that I saw were doing good work, they were working on important issues, they were incredibly ethical, bound by very robust rules and laws, which they followed very carefully, and they absolutely contributed to national security. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciated this opportunity.